Hello everyone, welcome back to another video in our timer service tutorial series. In this video we are going to be taking a look at how we can use the JDBC job store for our timer service. So in the previous videos we have built everything our timer service works but everything that we have so all of the timers that we create are stored in memory. So that means that as soon as we um, cancel our application so as soon as we shut it down all of the timers are gone they're not persisted and once we start application again the application doesn't know about any previous timers so in some cases that's okay for depending on an implementation depending how you need to use these timers that could be perfectly fine but in some cases you actually want to persist them so you actually want to save them in a database and once your application dies for whatever reason either you shut it down manually or it died by itself because of some error or something you want to keep your timers and you want to reuse them that's some something that you can use the jdbc store for so let's see how we can do that the first thing uh, I also would like to mention in this tutorial, and so in this video only, I will be doing a bit different format, so I will not type any code, I already have it prepared, so I will just guide you through it. It's just because there are not uh, a lot of things that we need to change, and it's much easier for me than I have to type it, and then you just watch me type, which makes no sense. So let's just uh, see what I did. As you can see here, uh, the first thing that we are looking at is in our build gradle file. So you can see that it's in our uh, root folder and there is a build gradle file and we have added a dependency for the Spring Boot Starter JDBC. So you also need to do that and you also need to have the MySQL connector. This will enable us, so both of them will enable us to actually connect the database and to be able to store the timers. Okay, that being said, after you have it added it, please make sure that you refresh your Gradle so you can do it here and you have to reload all of the Gradle projects and then you have the latest dependencies. Once you're done with that, we move on to the next thing. You can see that in our uh, resources, so in our resources folder, we created a new SQL folder and there we have a script. So we have a quads.sql. The name here is not really important. I just wanted to place this code somewhere. So these are uh, all of the tables that the timer will be using. So the scheduler, the, 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 the library itself is using. So this is not something that I created. I copied this from uh, their web page. So this is what they create. These are the tables that you, that you need. And basically you can uh, just copy paste this and execute it in uh, whatever you're using to connect to your database. For example, I'm using the workbench and you can see that in the MySQL workbench, I have the quads schema table so this is the name of the ta of the database that I gave it and I have created these uh, tables so I just executed this script and didn't change anything uh, in it so you can do exactly that you can execute it and yeah you will have everything ready for your database basically then you can close this if you don't have um, a database so if you don't have a MySQL server or something like that I will be providing a video in description which will explain you how you can set one up and how you can get the MySQL workbench and how you can um, basically do whatever you need to do there. So if you don't have it, then, then take a look at that video first and then come back into this one. It's quite simple, so it's not much of a work, so don't worry about it. Okay, so with this being ready and with our Gradle file being ready, we move on to the application properties. Here we need to declare a few things. For example, we need to say which job store we are going to be using, like the JDBC one, and we also need to provide some connection to our database. So which database are we using, which schema? Here you can see the quad schema. So this is just the name I gave it and the driver class name and also the username and password. So you can see that I have Rust root root. And with that being done, we are basically done with the configuration in the application properties. Next, we move to the uh, configuration of our data source. You can see that in, uh, in the main package, I've created a quads configuration class. So you can create one also, uh, you can name it however you want. The important thing is that you uh, annotate with add configuration. So the Spring knows that this is a, a configuration class and also add enable auto configuration class. Then we use this quads data source uh, annotation and also uh, it's a new bean. So a data source, a quads data source, basically just copy this, uh, what I have here. This will just create a data source for the quads to use. And with that done, we are done with the configuration part. We now want to move to the actually using this new store. You can see that I also have some modifications to the timer info class. 
if we move there, you can see that now it implements uh, an interface. This is just uh, so that we are able to serialize it. You need to implement this since we are going to be saving this timer info in the database, so it needs to be serializable. So just implement this interface and that's everything you need to change here. So it's actually quite simple. The next thing is in our playground service. I just did a simple change. You actually don't have to do that. Um, that I just uh, increased the repeat interval from, I think it was, yeah, uh, 200 milliseconds to 500 so that we have some more time to see how the timer runs and some things that we're going to be trying out. So this is something that you can do, but you don't have to. And also in the scheduler service, that's the most important change in our update timer method. So in the previous video, we did an updating of our timer, basically this part here and everything worked, but now we actually want to store that in the database. So we need to call the scheduler at job method, which will um, add to, so replace the existing job with a new one. Uh, based on the job details so the, which we provide. And the job details are the same ones as we used before. We are now just um, upgrading them. So we are, we are changing the information like we just did, uh, I think, uh, the remaining fire count, and now we're adding it to the database. Okay, so let's start our application and basically see how it works. And here we should be able to see that we are now using the job store CMT. Um, yeah, the, the store. So. That means that we are not using the RAM one, which is perfect, which is exactly what we wanted. So if I open the postman and I execute this request to get the hello world job, um, it should uh, say here like a yeah, file, file fail to find it because yeah, we still don't have it. And let me just clear the logs here and go back. So let's create it. So let's um, execute this. This will create our job and we should be able to see it. So our main file count is four. And now we should, um, since, yeah, so it's running, I can query for it. I should be able to get it and I should be able to get it here. And I also should be able to delete it. So now we should not see anything, which is perfect. And actually if I query it here, it should also not return anything, which is exactly what we want. And let's now create it again. And so we have a new one running and let's let's kill our application. So our application was killed and now we are restarting it. And if we fetch our timer, we should still be able to get it after our application is, yeah, exactly. We can still get it and it's still firing and after it says expired, we should not be able to get it anymore. And you can see that it's done, perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. So our timers are persisted and they are being continued as soon as our application restarts. And that's about it. <laughs> so it's done uh, what we wanted to do with the JTBC job store. As you can see, it's quite simple to actually have it. So we don't have to do much changes to our application. Uh, that would be everything for this video. If you have any questions or if you have um, anything unclear about this, uh, please do leave a comment and then I will try to answer you as soon as possible. And yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you have some uh, additional things that you would like me to show uh, also do let me know and yeah I, I will try to get to it as soon as I can. Please if you like the videos uh, like them uh, so click like and subscribe to my channel uh, for more content like this it would really help me out. So thank you and I will see you in the next video.